So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now listen, call me ignorant, call me crazy, call me misinformed, whatever you want to call me. It is what it is. I had no clue that new breeds of dogs were continuously being discovered. Like, this is new to, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? As, as long as I've known about dogs, I've always heard of the same core breeds of dogs. You know what I mean? Your Rottweilers, your German Shepherds, your Pit Bulls, your, your Golden Retrievers, your, your Chihuahuas. You know what I mean? Just the main ones you've always, I've never heard of that. So this video right here is extremely, extremely intriguing to me. You know what I mean? The most, the, the title of the video is the most recently discovered dogs in the world. Now, I know there's been an enormous amount of breeders who've come onto the scene now. Like everybody you know is a dog breeder nowadays. Yes, it's money in it, so everybody's going after it. So I'm guessing that's where a lot of this stuff could possibly be coming from too as well. So we're gonna check this video out, man. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and join the fam and hit the like button if you wanna continue to discover and learn and check out and research and find different videos just like this one. All right, hit that like. Let's go. New dogs are added to the American. Uh oh, hold on. Started too. Each year, new dogs are added to the American Kennel Club's roster and registered as genetically distinct new dog breeds. From the very largest sheepdogs and mastiffs to the tiny toy terriers and other small lap dog breeds. People love dogs. Toy terrier? I've never heard of that. And they're willing to go to the end of the earth to find the right breed for their lifestyle, family, or other factors. Today we'll be looking at 30 recently discovered dog, dog breeds, or at least recently recognized. These rare dogs are all unique and geared towards different lifestyles. Some do well to be doted on with children, and others prefer a demanding working lifestyle. Make sure you make it to the end to see some ancient breeds with incredible abilities, and even ones you won't believe are around. Without further ado, make sure you're subscribed to Forever Green, and let's get into it. Number 30, Pyrenees Shepherd. These were herders from the Pyrenees Mountains and tended to be loyal, brave, and tough. They may look like house pets, but they're not generally great indoor dogs or with families. Rather better suited for work or show instead. They're energetic and mischievous, and without daily exercise or work, may become aggressive or even destructive. Though intelligent, they tend to be stubborn and work best alone rather than with other pets. They were first recognized as a breed in 2009. He's like, oh my God, what are you doing to me with these bubbles? and would be more popular if they were house suited, but their numbers have suffered over the years due to their high maintenance personality. A puppy from a breeder may cost anywhere from $700 to $1,500 per dog. Less expensive than some other rare dogs on this list, but still on the high end. Number 29, Scottish Deerhound. Never heard. Being a never heard of that Scottish Deerhound. I've never heard that. Before. Popular breed is not always a good thing, as the popularity of the Scottish Deerhound is what led to their decline. They were so prized that they became exceedingly expensive over the years, causing them to be difficult to get your hands on. They have a gentle and polite personality, which is why people wanted them so badly. I feel like a lot of the prices on dogs right now are being driven up. Like they are astronomical prices for dogs you're talking about that, that like he just said seven to, to 1500 i've been hearing tens of thousands and 25 and 20 thousands and bullies costing this amount of money and i'm like yo y'all are running up the price of these dogs. like what is going on to begin with though they have been on the rise ever since loving and loyal they are the happiest when fawned over by friends and family and fantastic with children as well as when they are put to work they make great sighthounds and are absolutely massive they have a very personable demeanor and are shown to train well but do not handle other animals very well they were first recognized in 1886, and due to their rarity, they can cost anywhere from $1,000 to $2,500 from a breeder. Have you ever been to a dog show? A lot of these dogs aren't common enough to see in person. In fact, they're all so rare that you may never have seen them before. 
If you made it this far in the video, make sure you leave a like down below and go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Number 28, Peruvian Inca Orchid. When conquistadors from Spain invaded Peru, they stumbled across strange, hairless dogs in the orchid-scented home. They named the dogs Peros Flora, which is Spanish for flower dogs. Known as the Peruvian Incan Orca in English, this sensitive breed comes in coated and pairless varieties. The fur of coated types comes in many different lengths and textures. Some have a narrow patch on top of their head, like a mohawk. The hairless dogs require a moisturizing lotion, dog safe sunscreen, and a sweater in the winter. They're also very emotionally sensitive and react best to positive reinforcement and kind words. They've been recognized since 2010 by the AKC. These dogs are rare and haven't quite enjoyed the popularity of other breeds with only just about 1,000 dogs in the world. Due to their rarity, they often cost between $2,000 and $4,000 each. Number 27, Azawak. Out of West Africa, this tall, slender dog is an ancient hunting breed that was only just registered in 2019. They're so tall and slim that you can clearly see their bone structure through their skin, giving them a similar look to a Saluki. They're most commonly used as sighthounds in the region now. They're rare and one of the most expensive in the U.S. Prices from breeders ranging as high as $9,500. The more they're... Wee! We getting on up there in price, people. Sheesh! They're socialized as puppies, the better, and they don't respond well to punishment-based or harsh training. Positive, reward-based training with gentle but firm corrections can benefit this breed in the long term. See, now that, that scares me. That dog right there look like it's not being fed. You know what I mean? Look like he needs some food. And that's the thing too, man. If you can't take care of them, don't get them, bro, because they require a lot. Food wise and all, especially if you do the raw food diet like we did. Like, you know what I mean? Based training with gentle but firm corrections can benefit this breed in the long term as they make fantastic, if a bit reserved, family pets. Number 26, Niederlensi Cougar Hanji. Originally bred as a duck decoy dog in the Netherlands, the Cougar Hanji would lure ducks to their doom in human made pond trapping cages. The name in Dutch translates to small cager dog, and the plume tail helps entice ducks into the cells, called Eenku. They have been popular in the Netherlands for hundreds of years. They were only registered in 2018 with the AKC and have been gaining popularity in the US ever since. Number 25, Ty Ridgeback. What? The Ty Ridgeback is a high energy, protective hunting dog known to be somewhat aggressive towards other dogs. They often stalk or chase smaller animals for fun, as is in their nature. These dogs are not overly affectionate, but form strong bonds with their owners, seeking to protect them. They are more reserved and suspicious of other animals and strangers, so early socialization is essential. The loyalty of this breed makes them excellent family pets and protective over their homes. Typically, the species will go from anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 from breeders, but there's no hard and fast pricing standard among them. Number 24, Barbette. Registered in 2020, one of the newest additions to the American Kennel Club, the Barbette dog has been immortalized in French artwork since as early as the 16th century. They get the name from the French word Barbet, which means beard. One look at this woolly pup makes total sense with a name like that. This breed is rare, with long, curly, poodle-like coats of thick, curly fur. See, that remind me of the Shih Tzu. Whew. Talk about hair. Oh my gosh. Tangled up, matted up hair. Constant getting it trimmed like oh my gosh this shih tzu Whew. number 23 wire haired Gisla. the history of this breed remains somewhat a mystery because of many records didn't exist until the second world war like he got a beard though right <laughs> like he got the beard going 
The development of this particular breed began in the 20s in the Austria-Hungaria region by falconers and hunters looking for a different version of the Visla, the national dog of Hungary. They bred a dog with the hunting qualities of the original Visla, but with a dense, heavy wire coat to better withstand cold winters. Other than coat texture, they're also a bit taller and laid back than their Visla cousin. They have a high drive to please and tend to get attached to a single person, earning the nickname of Velcro Dog. They're good to work dogs or emotional support with sweet, calm demeanors. They were first recognized in 2014 by the AKC and are still rare and expensive as far as breeders go, ranging from $1,000 to $1,500 a puppy. Number 22, Beware Terrier. Similar in appearance to face like that. How you gonna name something Beware Terrier? Now, what he go into might, might explain it, but right now, looking at it, you can't be like, beware. This dog right here just don't have the face of the beware. Beware Terrier. I know it's spelled different, of course. Similar in appearance to their cousins, the Yorkshire Terrier. They were bred in the 1970s by a couple by the same name until 1981. The coloring is different as it ranges in a mix of black, white, and tan, and surfaced in 1984 with a slightly different genetic makeup than Yorkie specifically. The elegant, long-haired, tri-colored toy breed terrier's only purpose in life is to love and be loved in return, with a charming, whimsical attitude well into adulthood. They're fond of children, toys, and strangers alike. They are, however, also a very athletic breed, despite their light-hearted, childlike attitude, and make an excellent hunting dog. They were first recognized in 2007 and were, in fact, the first breed recognized as purebred as a result of a genetic study. I feel like all the women right now are going, oh, I could just put him in my purse or her in my purse. That's all women want to do is have the dog that can fit in their purse and go to the mall or something like that. Go somewhere with it. Number 21, American Hairless Terrier. Despite the name, the American Hairless Terrier comes in both hairless and coated varieties. They were both descended from a single rat terrier, which was bred selectively for its hairlessness, and the breed wasn't officially recognized until 2016. They're energetic, curious, intelligent, and have a long history of hunting small rodents. They're an ideal choice for owners with allergy issues due to low shedding and make perfect family pets with friendly, active natures. Do you have any dogs yourself? Do you have a favorite dog? Let us know about them down in the comments below. Everyone has a favorite, even if they don't realize it. Even if that favorite is a cat, a bird, or something else. We'd love to see the opinions down in the comments below. Make sure you watch through for something incredible. An ancient breed at the end that's been around for centuries at this point. With less than 1,000 left in the Americas. Number 20. Legato Romagnolo. This breed originated in Italy as a hard-working hunting dog, specifically as a water retriever. They're alert, intelligent, and lively, and excel in feats of obedience or agility. This breed's thick, dense coat would keep them protected from cold temperatures, and it's believed the most modern water dogs were descended from the breed. They're most commonly now used in their homeland to search for truffles due to their solid and trained noses, or as a lovable lab dog to the right family. The breed was only registered in 2015, but the lineage was traced as far back as the 1400s. Number 19, Dogo Argentina. Whoa. Regist Some dogs you just look at and you go, whoa. <laughs> that was a whoa moment for me. Registered in just 2020, this muscular dog was first developed in Argentina for large game hunting. They're fierce looking with a strong will and assertive leadership qualities that make them the kind of dog that needs an experienced owner. They are not the best for their first time dog owners. Still, that being said, they're loyal, protective family dogs that are not known to show aggression to their owners. The Dogo Argentino is still pretty rare in the United States, often ranging in the $8,000 range in some cases. Number 18. Canaan. 
One of the AKC's oldest breeds, the Canaan dog is the national dog of Israel. The quick, medium-sized pasture dog is docile with family and aloof with strangers. They're vocal and persistent guardians, known to keep watch of home and flock alike. They are rugged and agile and will end up owning anyone who doesn't establish themselves as top dog. They require early training and socialization, best done with positive reinforcement. They have a high drive and work ethic suited for herding trials, obedience, and sentry duty. Canaan dogs were recognized by the AKC in 1997, but go back hundreds of years in Israel, accepted first by the Israeli Kennel Club as early as 1953. Number 17, Slohi. To me, that dog is tall. Found mainly in Morocco, this yep. North African dog looks similar to the smooth Saluki, bred originally for hunting small game in the area. This ancient breed is revered for its speed, intelligence, endurance, and agility. They're highly devoted to their owners, typical for sighthounds, but they're also a robust breed known for their sensitive demeanor, requiring gentle training. They were registered with the AKC in just 2016, but are an ancient breed from North Africa dating back hundreds of years. Number 16, Grand Basset Griffin Vendeen. These small, short-legged dogs originated in France as hunting and sniffing dogs, but are mostly companion animals today. These dogs are natural pack animals with their hunting heritage, kept best with one or more other dogs. They're active and energetic and do not tire quickly. They do best with a regular workout, so stay happy and out of trouble. Number 15, Tibetan Mastiff. Anything with Mastiff in the name is just, just gigantic beast of a looking dog, bro. Developed centuries ago in Tibet, they were used initially as livestock and property guard dogs. Purebred Tibetan Mastiffs are rare, known for being increasingly expensive due to the rarity, costing anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000 from a breeder. However, they have a strong jaw and are known to chew wood and be destructive without a good outlet for their energy. If we judge their bite by other Mastiffs, they have a reported bite force of 552 pounds. The AKC declared this dog an official breed in 2006. The Tibetan Mastiff is best known as a guard dog, but has a kind, sweet demeanor with the family it protects. <laughs> Number 14, Chinese Chongqing Dog. Believed to have first appeared 2,000 years ago during the Han Dynasty in China, the Chongqing Dog is an ancient, albeit rare, breed. There are only around 2,000 or less in the world today. They're intelligent, loyal, and dignified dogs, best suited to families with respectful children or owners with other dogs. They're defensive and protective of their owners under perceived threat. They are not yet AKC recognized, but they are recognized by America's Pet Registry and Dog Registry of America Incorporated as purebred dogs. So we may see that change in several years. Number 13, Stabby Hoon. As a descent of Spaniels brought by the Spanish occupation, these dogs were first created in Friesland. They are still massively popular in their homeland, but their numbers are beginning to dwindle, with just 300 in the United States. Though luckily, they do have a few dedicated breeders passionate about keeping them around. They were developed for farm work as a catch-all dog, well-suited for hunting, guarding, herding, point, retrieving, and tracking all at once, as well as being a well-mannered and loving family companion. They're intelligent and need to be put to work, or they may become rowdy with all their extra energy. The Stabby Hound is not yet entirely recognized by the AKC, but the breed is part of the Foundation Stock Service. Number 12, Cerneco dell'Etna. From the island of Sicily, these Italian hunting dogs were bred to hunt small game and rabbits. They're sleek, athletic, and known for their speed and agility. They make highly loyal, loving family companions. They're known best for their large, upright ears and smooth, short coat. 
leading them to often be confused with feral hounds. The ancient breed is rare in the U.S., only registered with the AKC in 2015, but has been growing in popularity ever since. Number 11, Spanish Water Dog. Traditionally, these curly-haired dogs were Spanish herding and guard dogs. They've been popular for years with their dense, long coats as gun dogs, with genetic links to other water retrievers like Irish water spaniels or poodles. They're energetic, intelligent, and have powerful hunting instincts, but need firm and consistent training. They're versatile animals, though, and make good working dogs as they do loyal family companions. Number 10. Curly Coated Retriever With their iconic tight curls, this pup is best known for their coat, which helps to keep them dry and comfortable no matter the circumstance. Though they are one of the world's oldest recognized retriever breeds, identified by the AKC in 1924, they are now considered in danger. They're most popular in the United Kingdom, but are rare in the United... 1924, wow. I know it's it's not like you know what I mean abnormal for it to be. It's just when you hear that that year, it's like wow. United States, they respond best to kind but firm training. These highly intelligent dogs often need constant physical and mental stimulation to avoid becoming bored or destructive. That seems like a common theme, right? You hear that a lot. They need attention, time room to run around play do different things like you know what i mean if you listen that seems to be a common thing for a lot and if not they just like kids they just gonna become destructive <laughs> you know what i'm saying they do well if socialized early and thoroughly though they can be relatively aggressive and protective if not number nine burger picard this unique breed nearly went extinct in World War I and II and remains rare today. With just 3,500 in their native France and less than 400 in the US, they were registered in 2015 with the AKC but have a lineage as far back as the 9th century. They're originally from Picardy, a region in France where they got their name. They've mainly been used as herding dogs with hard working and high energy. Number eight. Parson Russell Terrier. This bold and clever terrier is swift enough to run with horses as is fearless enough to dig in and flush a fox out from its lair. PRT dogs have their own ideas on handling things. Intelligent, independent problem solvers, you can't let their cute looks get the better of you. They're built tough and can move at breakneck speeds. Other than that, they're affectionate and easy to socialize with both children and other dogs alike. Though in terms of training, they require consistency and a gentle voice and engaging training sessions based on a reward system rather than punishment. A purebred PRT will cost anywhere between $1,200 and $2,000, as they're quite a bit rarer than a smaller Jack Russell Terrier cousins and recognized in most countries as a wholly unique breed all their own. The AKC first recognized this breed in 1997, and they've stayed relatively popular ever since, though still rare in practice. He was not backing down, you hear me? No, <laughs> fail. I don't care, size don't mean nothing to me. Number seven, Bergmasico's Sheepdog. This dog's stunning, unique coat makes it look like they require extensive professional grooming, but don't be fooled. They're actually nearly effortless to care for. The corded or matted fur is actually a combination of three different fur types, dog hair, goat hair, and wool. Wow. They mat together into their iconic locks. This dog hailing from that's Italy was, is a patient. That's what I was sitting there thinking about, a dog with dreadlocks. That is a dog that you just saw with, I, I, I think I've seen it all at this point. Sheepdog that excels at hiking obedience and has a patience as a therapy dog for people with disabilities or children in hospitals. They were first recognized in 2015 by the AKC and have maintained their relative popularity since, experiencing a boom right before official recognition.
They're known to be somewhat protective and steady in their personality, making them the quintessential sheepdog. Their fur makes them ideal working animals in harsh, cold climates of the Alps. The breed is friendly and non-aggressive, creating fantastic working dogs, guard dogs, and family companions. Number six, Chinook. Originally bred as a versatile speed dog, the friendly Chinook is best known for its love of children. They were recognized by the AKC as of 2013 and only 813 dogs registered. Chinooks generally cost between $1,000 to $2,500 from breeders due to their breed's rarity. The name itself means warm winter winds in the Inuit language and lives up to it. They excel at mushing, sledding, hiking, and scourging, which is a winter sport in which a person on skis is pulled by dogs. They have a tawny colored double coat that sheds heavily every day and have either drop or prick ears, but those don't change until four to six months. Number five, Belgian Lakenos. The rough-coated Lakenos is one of the rarest Belgian herding breeds and the most recent addition to the AKC's complete recognition list. This alert, medium-sized dog has prick ears and a boxy build, as well as its iconic, boyishly tousled coat. They have a protective personality and are prone to possessiveness over their favorite people, so early socialization is crucial. Thanks to their impressive heritage and herding, they must be taught to not start herding children or other animals early on, or else they're known to nip at their heels to keep them in line. Observing them closely, you'll see the Belgian Lakenos tend to circle around rather than run in straight lines. A quirky feature of the herding past, they tend to take to training very well, being eager to please. Number four, Pumi. This curly-coated shepherding dog has its origins in Hungary, with its tiny, compact size allowing them to move flocks down the narrow roads to pastures. They were only registered in 2016, but have roots from hundreds of years back, as early as 1815. They might look like lab dogs, but they're hard workers with an agile, energetic, and vocal work ethic. They've got the high intellect of a herding dog, alertness of a terrier, and the cute appearance of your standard lap dog, making them a unique breed indeed. Number three, Borboil. Goodness, girl, <laughs> look at the size, bro. Look at how he stand up and <sighs> Can't help it, bro. Ask me, I like big dog. I I'm into like, I know, I know, typical, right? Yeah, typical man thing. I do, man. Like the big breeds, the Mastiffs, the German, like the different big, like, yeah, Rottweilers, Pits, all that kind of stuff, man. Yeah, give me one of them, fam. I'm, I'm for it. That's why I said, I told Queen, like our next place we, we, we move into, it got to have like a farm backyard. I got to have all my different dogs and stuff like that. I can't help myself. You know what I mean? Weighing anywhere from 145 to 155 pounds, the Borboil is one of the most athletic Mastiff breeds out there. This dog's dominant personality is best for people with already established large dog experience. In South Africa, where the breed comes from, they worked as farm dogs and aggressively protected the land, herd, and families they reigned over. The breed arrived in America in the 80s and grew in popularity due to their relatively easy care and grooming with a short wash and wear coat. They benefit best from early and consistent socialization and need to be introduced to new people, sights, sounds, and situations early and often. <laughs> Number two, Portuguese Podingo Pequeno. Native to Portugal, this dog comes in three sizes, despite being a single breed. In the US, the Portuguese Podango Pequeno is seen as its own breed, smaller than the other two sizes. They measure from eight- All that just made me think about is that meme. I'm fast, boy. 
fast, I'm just fast boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he was just running. To 12 inches in height and ranged around nine to 13 pounds in weight. These pack dogs were bred in Spain and Portugal to hunt rabbit and when adequately trained, have a friendly, upbeat attitude and get along well with other dogs very well. They recover quickly from fear and have a high acute sense of smell and hearing. They're best known for their high agility and can thrive in just about any environment, as long as they're given plenty of exercises to get their energy out. Although this breed is much older than most, it wasn't recognized by the AKC until 2013. Mm. Number one, Zolo Escaluntli. I don't even think I can, I can't pronounce that. I have to practice. Recognized by the AKC in, in 2011, Zola Escalutli is an affectionate dog known best for its unique look and nearly hairless status. They look like prehistoric creatures or more aptly current day elephants or rhinoceros. These high energy dogs require consistent training and clearly defined boundaries as they require that to grow into well-adjusted, well-mannered companions. They don't bark often, but take their watchdog status seriously. Quiet and protective, always on the lookout. They make great family dogs, especially for families with allergies, as their short coats provide a bit of relief. They're on the lower end for rare dogs, as they may only cost between $600 and $800 to buy from a reputable breeder. Despite being one of the world's rarest and most unique dogs, there are very few in the US and have faced extinction for several years due to their superstitious association. There are fewer than 30,000 worldwide and less than 1,000 of those are in the US. Well, that's gonna be it for today. If you liked the video, I can honestly say I didn't recognize anything on this list. Any dog on this list, I did not recognize. So yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This was uh, this was pretty informative, man. I, I'm I'm fascinated, you know. And to think that some of these breeds have been acknowledged since certain years that they were describing on this this uh, video, it's just fascinating. So y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know were y'all aware of some of these breeds. Um, I mean, of course we've heard of mastiffs, but the that specific type of them. Have you ever heard of those different breeds? I've never. Never. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you think and stick around and stay tuned to the next one I'm going. Peace.